Just wait for Kyle, I guess. And then we can. In the absolute uh, fuck is uh, up, uh oh, Bob. uh oh, there he is. <laughs> so we're the timing. Kyle, right? The timing. Oh my god. What's up, bro? Not much, man. We we get Nevada. We do, we good. We're done. Right, if we get those yeah. two. We're fine. And there goes half of my subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck <Trump>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yep, there he goes. If you guys have been following this channel for a long time, you would know that I love movie i love cinema this is my passion perhaps my biggest passion you know i i, I want to be an actor in many ways i am right now an independent actor and i hope to be you know making movies acting in movies big movies in hollywood one day um so that's my passion right movies uh and then lately i've really gotten into a video game you know ever since the the pandemic i've been playing more video games you know making you know video game content on this channel you know putting out something new for you guys. So why is that every time that there's a new video game movie that's coming out? I just don't get that excited. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. I've been wanting to talk about this topic for a long time. I just don't know how to approach it and I don't know what the solution to this is. I feel like now I have the answer. I feel like now I know why most video game movies don't work. Uh, some of them are pretty okay. You know, my personal favorite um, is it's not Sonic? I haven't seen Sonic, um, but my personal favorite is the um, Tomb Raider movie that came out not too long ago, like a couple years ago, three years ago, right? Uh, I thought the movie was okay. Uh, it was pretty good, pretty well made, in my opinion. Um, but then that's my point, right? Even even the best one, um, they're just okay. They're they're never like great, you know. Generally speaking, right? Video game movies they are either pretty okay, you know. Some of them are pretty okay. Most of them, pretty trash. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys two reasons why video games movies or video games adaptation in general, right, don't usually work. There, are, I'm sure there are more than two reasons, but th this is, in my opinion, the two biggest reasons why they don't work. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you three video games that I feel like would make incredible adaptation either on the big screen or you know small screen with TV and whatnot streaming services and whatnot right so reason number one video games they are unique they are very unique art form and yes I said the word art because video game is art right we all know that everybody knows that they are unique because us the consumers we have our say in it you know we have choices when we consume the product um, you see, with movies and TV and books, comic books, short story, novel, folklores, if you want to put it in there, right? These are, you know, forms of storytelling where the consumers, they are passive, right? You just sit there and you consume the product. You know, different people might have different, um, you know, emotional reaction to the story. Different people might interpret, you know, the the scene or the, the quote or the, the character development differently from another consumer. But at the end of the day, we watch the same movie, we watch the same episodes, we, uh, we, we read the same book, and we, we consume those, right, through the eyes of, the writers, the producer, the, the directors, the actors, the writers of, of the books and whatnot, right? We don't have our say in it, you know? We don't get to say, okay, this character do this, this character do that, you know? We don't have a choice. With video games, you see, especially modern video games, you definitely have a choice. You definitely have a choice. Who you kill, who you let alive. Um, my playthrough of, let's say, God of War might be completely different from your playthrough of God of War, you know. I, I'm the type of players that, you know, go through every single um, uh, side quest, you know. Uh, you might be the type of player to rush through the story. You just want to see what happened at the end, you know. Uh, I do side quests in between 
main missions. You finish the story, and then you do the side quest. My playthrough of, let's say, Detroit Becomes Human is completely different, especially the first one, right? The first playthrough is completely different from yours, and so on and so forth, you know what I mean? So when you play a video game, you... Yes, there, there's, you know, the director and you know, the developers who make the game and, you know, you buy the game and, and you consume it and whatnot. In that sense, it is similar to, like, movies and TV and whatnot. But when you are, you know, actively consuming it, you have a choice. You have your input. You have a say in the, the certain events that take place in the video game. You go from one platform where the consumers have a choice, right? To another platform where you are just passively consuming the product which is in my opinion the downfall you know it's already a, a big l for a video game adaptation because the the hardcore fans they're not going to be nowhere near as excited and as um emotionally invested in the movie or the tv show that you're making compared to the video game that they play for example right doom doom 2016 you know, between that and Doom Eternal, there's so little cutscene. You see so little of the Doom guy, right? You barely see his face, barely see any cutscene where he is, you know, in third person perspective. Um, for 90% of the time throughout the two games, you are the Doom Slayer. Now, you're the one controlling the Doom Slayer. It's not, you know, a character. That is killing the demons. You are actually doing it. You know, it's your input. That's your choice. And in the movie, right, just Carl Urban. <laughs> you know, I mean, no disrespect to Carl Urban. You know, he's one of my favorite actors working today. And I love the guy. He's super likable. Um, but is, you see where I'm going with this? So as a filmmaker, what do you do? Do you make a movie, you know, to please the hardcore video game fans? Right, um, and by that I mean it's just a giant checklist, right, of references, fan services, Easter eggs, and that's it. Or do you do what uh, Christopher Nolan did with Batman? You see, Christopher Nolan with the Dark Knight trilogy, he didn't make Batman movies. He made three good movies that just happened to be about Batman. So with the video game adaptation, do you do that as a filmmaker? You just make your own movie with, you know, a good script, good character, and, you know, you just make the movie that you want to make. You make a good movie that just happened to be about Mario and Luigi. Do you make a good horror movie that just happened to be about the Resident Evil characters. The rating of your movies would definitely be better, but then the hardcore fans, they're gonna complain. They're gonna be like, well, if you're not gonna have all the, the, the references and the, the fan services, why make the movie about this video game at all? So that's the first problem. And I think the biggest problem that filmmakers run into when they make a video game movie. And the second problem is, and when I say it, it might sound like it's not that you know big of a deal, but in my opinion, Hollywood, they pick the wrong video games to make movies out of. They, may, they make movies out of, you know, some of the best video games out there. You see, when you make a movie about something so beloved, you know, there's certain um, expectation that you gotta meet. Video games nowadays, they're basically movies. You know what I mean? With the characters interacting, with the photorealistic uh, graphic. Um, the dialogue and the, the, the interaction between characters, the storyline. Video games nowadays are basically movies. Playable movies, if you will. Um, so when you make a movie out of that, just like, why? Unlike the first problem, I actually have the solution for this problem. Just make movies out of okay video games. You know, mediocre, you know, above average video games. Video games that are, you know, like... By the community, video games that are, you know, not horrible, but not great. You know what I mean? Just okay. Like indie game, for example. Like non-AAA games. And make movies out of those. There are some games, there are some non-AAA games 
that are really beloved, and not for the gameplay, not for the graphic, but for the world that they built, for the characters in that world, and people are interested in that world, and they want to spend time in that world, you know? So make movies out of those. You know, you, got, you already got the setting, and now you just need characters and a good story. Because the games are just average or just okay, there are rooms for improvement and that's where the the movie adaptation comes in and that's where the you know hollywood and the filmmakers they come in in my opinion to make those improvement to say you know what the the video game the original video game itself is okay it has potential um but we know how to make them even better we know how to make this world and you know we have we know how to write these characters even better so with that being said um here are three video games well two and a half if you think about it that i feel like hollywood should make movies and tv show out of and uh this is just my opinion uh, if you disagree that is perfectly fine i would love to hear what is your pick for um these video games you know to, to make movies out of I think that'd be. I think in the comment section that would be a really fun thing to do. Um, but here are you know here are mine. Um, number one, Vampire. I think Vampire would make a kick-ass video game uh, adaptation. For if you want to make movies or TV show out of this video game, I think it would be kick-ass. And the reason why I said that, I, I haven't finished the game. I you know, just recently play it. I'm pre still pretty early in, into the game. Um, I got it for free because of, you know, a PlayStation Plus and whatnot. And, you know, what I realized when I played this video game is that the game itself, you know, as far as core gameplay is not great. You know, combat is very dry. Um, movement and, you know, all that, you know, uh, traversing the map is very basic. There's nothing, like, special about it. What I love the most about this game is uh, the, the setting. I think the, the, the setting is just genius. Uh, and, and the character, you know, Dr. Jonathan Reed, I think is a fascinating character. So that would be that that would be an example of a, you know, above average game that even though they're not great, got potential. My second choice would be the Order 1886. Now the Order 1886, um, graphically, I think it is one of the best looking game on the PlayStation 4. That being said, there's nothing that special about playing this game. You know, the core gameplay, it just is basically uncharted. You know, it is every, it is basically every single uh, cover shooter that you, you've played before. You know, it's very basic. Um, and you, you're not going to remember, you know, having finished the game. You're, it's not something that you, you remember. That's all I'm going to say. Um, that being said... I think the character is fa fascinating. I got. I, I think the world, you know, that steampunk London, with werewolf. My God, like, make a movie out of that. Come on, you know, you know what I mean. Like, you know the, the steampunk world, the the, the sci-fi ish weapons, the um the werewolf, the political drama, and the characters. I thought Sir uh, Galahad was a very well written character. Um, they didn't really flesh him out that much, right? So that's where the movie comes in, in my opinion. That's that's where the the filmmakers could make those improvement in their movie if they choose to adapt. You know, the order eighteen eighty six. And last but not least, this might be a very controversial pick in my opinion, but if uh, Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max or whoever decide to pick this up, I think it'd be, it would be a kick ass. Uh, TV show, anthology, series, right? This is not going to be a movie, in my opinion, um, but an anthology series based on this, not video game, but a mode in this video game would be pretty kick-ass, and that is Call of Duty Zombies. Now, imagine a Call of Duty Zombies anthology series where every single season they focus on a different map and by the end of the series right the the season finale or the last 
season of this show, they bring in the four main characters. You know, they bring in Nikolai, they bring in um, Doctor, the German doctor, and the Japanese soldiers, and the uh, uh, Tang Dempsey. They bring in those guys, and they just wrap everything up in this one final season. And everything is connected and whatnot. Is I think if done right, it's going to make a shit ton of money. And it's going to be a huge success. So guys, in the comment section, let me know if you agree or disagree with my opinion. And what kind of video games would you like to see being adapted on the big screen or small screen, whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed my video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, with that being said, oh wait, I forgot to say this. Stay smooth, stay lit, stay hydrated. I'll see you soon. Thank you.